Thank you very much, sir. Good morning to everybody. Good afternoon, Neeraj. Good afternoon. <laughs> All right, Bombay so, traffic at show. <laughs> so the storm has begun already. So here we go. Segment one, insights. Every individual is positive social change waiting to happen. Hashtag awareness plus hashtag communication equals thoughts translating into action. Simple math. Neeraj. Neeraj, he's already treating it. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh, Media consumption is shifting from prime time to my time, on demand, anytime, anywhere. Second. Okay, so you want my second insight? Yes. Immediately? I thought Absolutely. we were going with the story. No, insight. Okay. My second insight. When an individual's thoughts are inclusive of humanity, then an individual's happiness is benefited by multiplicity. Hashtag simple math, which they taught us this in school. Storytelling will become more immersive, interactive, gamified, with the video becoming almost like air. Your thoughts, your words, your actions, your choices will come together to tell your story. Hashtag collective impact, hashtag be the change. Media consumption will lead to transactions, the holy grail, without losing the core of entertaining, informing, or engaging with consumers. Next segment, stories behind the insights. Dia. I was 18 years old when I won a beauty pageant. And uh, it made me a household name overnight in India. And uh, amongst many opportunities that came my way at the time, some of the opportunities made a huge impact on the way I perceived my own life and this incredible opportunity that had come my way. Um, I was approached by the government of Andhra Pradesh to spread awareness on HIV and AIDS. And um, we worked actively on that campaign for a year and statistics showed results. And that made a big difference in the way I perceived the opportunity that had come along. Um, I think in our early years when we're growing up uh, through our school education, there are many models and many systems that encourage us to become participators, social participators, to make a difference in people's lives. And I think as children, we receive the gratitude that we, we get through that experience. But as we grow older and start chasing life's ambitions and wanting to do more with ourselves to make money, to you know, grow, uh, to become more uh, um, successful, we sometimes forget uh, the gratitude that we've received in making a difference. Um, and I think it was uh, somewhere in 2003 or 4, um, many years after I had continued to participate in many social uh, initiatives, that I discovered that I could combine what I do with how, what it makes me feel. So the pursuit of opportunity did not necessarily have to be one that only correlated to the ambition to do better in life uh, materially, but also to make a difference alongside. And um, that was life-changing for me because I haven't looked back at a single day when I haven't felt like my existence is not entirely insignificant and that this great opportunity life has given me uh, in, in expanding my access to people um, to make a change and use all of it that I do through my everyday work, which is whether it is making films or acting in films or anything else that I do, combine that with the social change that I would like to make and seek to make. And uh, it's been my key to happiness. I've made money along the way, but more than that, 
I've earned a lot of um, gratitude, and that's, that's my key to happiness. And I think everybody is seeking happiness eventually. So, yeah. Neeraj. Excellent. And I'll, uh, uh, I can vouch for that, for, for some of the wonderful work which Dia has done and continues to do. Uh, so my journey is, uh, I came to this wonderful city about two decades ago uh, in pursuit of not happiness, but in pursuit of an MBA degree, uh, which one hoped that would be, uh, lead to some happiness. Uh, at, just when I started itself, uh, there was a strong urge to do something on my own, you know, Terms like entrepreneur, etc., were not necessarily as profound, and certainly that was not the ecosystem of the startup world as, as we have seen and been familiar with over the last couple of years. Uh, so, on uh, on the auspicious day of All Fools Day in back in '99, which is first of April, I founded Hangama. So uh, that's been one of the reasons we've never really taken ourselves too seriously. But at that time, the the, the environment was there were about a million people who were online, uh, you were, uh, companies like Yahoo, etc., internationally, uh, had been uh, hugely successful. Uh, just to put in perspective, you know, we're trading at about 135, 140 billion dollars in enterprise value. Just two weeks back, they were sold for about 4.8. And uh, back in 98, a friend of mine sort of got me introduced to uh, something called as the India Internet World. A couple of months prior to that, I'd got myself an email account, and uh, through that email account, I went about searching and, and, and got myself a couple of books. Uh, before, I, before I knew it, I wanted to chuck my rather boring job of uh, investment banking, which I had, and that's what led to the culmination of Angama. But coming to the core of the subject here and the need for innovation, at that point in time, I essentially saw that this medium is going to transform, is going to become, uh, you know, a media which has the ability to touch a lot more and much more than almost anything that has happened around us. Uh, those weren't uh, the days of mobile phones, etc., so it was really still pretty much a PC-driven environment. And I chose entertainment as a category to move in. And the reason I chose that was that when I looked back about 100 years, I saw that almost all major media movements have had entertainment as a very big catalyst. If you go back, say, 60, 70 years uh, to the first uh, set of television, uh, you know, the, the sort of shows or soaps, as they were uh, popularly called, because companies like Colgate, Palmolive, etc., were uh, sponsoring them were driven by entertainment over a period of time, segmentation, categorization, from business to sport to whatever came around. And I thought entertainment in a market like ours with a history of over 100 years of cinema, with an overall history of over 5,000 years, and the aspect of uh, a very diverse culture uh, augurs very well for uh, an opportunity centered around entertainment. But obviously, my journey was... Uh, uh, sort of, you know, rammed by a whole host of uh, 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 more what I would call as digital cosmic moments as such, which were largely the dot-com bust, which happened in early part of uh, 2000. So literally within six or eight months, dot-com, the word itself was a bad word. <laughs> and I realized that, you know, in order for me to survive, it was a little bit like... Uh, for those of you who've played, let's say, the game of Mario, you know, you, you've got to jump at the right time. And, and uh, the internet, in many ways, uh, uh, and in the last decade, has become even f more, f more rapid in its change. But it keeps on evolving, keeps on changing. And hence, this company went through about uh, three or four phases of what I would call as transformation from a contesting, you know, sort of... Uh, interactive to gaming to then discovering the core of entertainment which happened about eight nine years back starting with music and then taking the entire paradigm to video to video on demand original programming because you know the market was also at that stage beginning to transition and this was being driven by two simple things if you think about it you know it's device and connectivity device uh, given the fact that uh, you know more and more uh, devices were becoming a connected device. 
uh, and we are going to continue to see this happen. And therefore, from these phones becoming, you know, being phones which we use like that, they were coming in front of us and they were becoming what we term as consumption devices. And the biggest category to sort of benefit out of that was really going to be, you know, video in many ways, and which we are beginning to see with the advent of uh, services like 4G or LTE, et cetera, beginning to happen. And which is why I mentioned as well that, to me, video will become like air. Uh, it will be everywhere. It will be on that surface of, of, the, of the tables that you're sitting on. As you walk into your car, it's there. It will walk into your elevator. And each of these devices are interconnected. And hence, how we will consume media, how we will consume content itself is going to change. Already, if you see a lot of it, is happening in that manner. You don't necessarily realize it, but when you are messaging on WhatsApp or whatever, this is digital content that's being consumed. And it is within that itself uh, is the emergence of uh, uh, narratives and stories that are beginning to emerge around that. So more we'll talk, you know, as we take this forward. But this, I would suggest, is like sort of the opening thoughts to uh, why I feel that prime time will become my time. Meera just elaborated my second piece, my second insight, um, where basically this narrative is an example of how everybody is a story. Everything that exists in the world as we know it is a story. Something that somebody else has crafted or one that you have perceived for yourself. So the awareness that your story, your thoughts, your actions and your words come together to define your narrative and therefore the narrative of the world is a wonderful thing to become aware of. Because that, I think, in many ways defined uh, many of my choices. When I was very young, uh, I must have been about four and a half or five, and um, my parents were getting separated. And I had come back early from school and I was sitting on the steps of uh, our home and I was very upset. Um, and my father came along and he said, what, what happened? Why do you look so sad? Um, so I looked up at him and believe it or not, at four and a half, five, I said, I have too many problems. So, <laughs> so he smiled at me and he walked me into my bedroom and he pulled out the map of the world. And he started to point out the continents. And uh, then he, of course, pointed out India on the map. And uh, followed by that, he point out, pointed out this dot on the map that was called Hyderabad. And I looked at him in absolute bewilderment. And I said, Hyderabad is just a dot, Papa? And he said, yes. Now imagine how big your problems are. And that perspective taught me an invaluable lesson that we might believe that our problems in, in, in life, and that's really what drives innovation, that's what drives purpose. It's our problems that combine to influence the story that we're telling of ourselves. But that perspective redefines and realigns how you want to address your hurdles and your problems and understand that your world or your view of the world is not limited to the I. That there is so much more for us to seek and discover and learn from, and that the problem could be a wonderful opportunity to bring change. And change is what drives innovation. Change is what drives excellence. Change is what drives a, ch a difference. Changing the narrative, the human narrative. And that is what drives impact. And digital, and, and the power that the digital platforms have brought is that ability to create change now. You know, we would have to wait back in the day to publish a journal or to write our story or to take a photograph and wait in line for it to get developed and reach us to share it with someone. Today, it all happens now. Absolutely, yeah. In fact, when I was here, you know, just mulling over 
your the story of your father pointing out to Hyderabad is a dot. I was reminded of uh, a project, a very successful entrepreneur uh, called Yuri Milner initiated and invited us uh, uh, about eight, nine months back to talk about it in Bangalore. And this was uh, a project which he funded essentially to look for life uh, beyond Earth. And uh, to put in perspective the aspect of the dot, uh, you know, mankind has discovered that there is 73 billion light years of space on one side with over 100 billion galaxies or thereabouts. So uh, certainly it, 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 it does, you know, make a realization of a certain nature into uh, your own self and, and the role that we have got here. To my second insight on storytelling will become more immersive, interactive, gamified, and which is the aspect of what I said, you know, video will become like air. So when you look back, uh, there has been what I would term as very linear format of s storytelling from, you know, the... the uh, 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 from uh, the painters who've uh, created uh, and captured uh, the beauty that you see in Florence, etc., and all of those, you know, to just depict the environment that used to be there, to the printing press, to the emergence of the first format of electronic, which was really television, which is still in a linear format, to now you being able to not only, like Dia said, real-time share text, uh, image, video, but you're now in an environment wherein you can even lead to what I would term as multi-path, because storytelling at the end of the day is one creator's perspective, but that same perspective can actually be viewed from different vantage points, and hence can technically have even alternative endings of their own. And this leads to something which we term as multi-path movies, which you discover when you start off, you know, uh, dependent on the viewer or the user's action, the story or the narrative is changing accordingly. And I think that's an aspect that we will see. We are certainly seeing, if you see the emergence of the gaming industry, it's a $140 billion business. It is uh, technically, from a theatrical revenue perspective, about 12x the amount of revenue that Hollywood films and cinema make out of just theatrical revenues in the United States. That entire advent uh, and the way we look at games, those today for this generation is storytelling of a different nature altogether because they are almost at times trying to put themselves inside that story. Uh, the aspect of what is being termed as gamification of stories, again, a very interesting aspect, which is it's not you're making them into games, but you're really what you're doing is by way of one or several actions, you are creating what is termed as gamification, which is amongst the top 10 trends over the last three years. To give you an example, let's say you're, you're watching something and you like it uh, or you comment on it. These could all be actions, but your action itself could be leading to you earning some points which you can then go and redeem against various things. That again is one more way of a slightly heightened form of immersion which is beginning to happen uh, and, and, and that's uh, gamification. And finally, as I mentioned, video becoming all proliferating uh, because of the quality of access that is happening. So uh, screens as we know it are no longer going to be just about the television screen or the mobile screen. Almost every type of screen, uh, I wish I could play out a video here for you uh, of, uh, you know, your, when, you're, when you wake up in the morning and you go into the washroom and, and change, that screen can be an interactive screen. Uh, the screen uh, that you put on, on your table can be an interactive screen. And this is where mankind needs to evolve that this consumption of multiple and millions of stories that are coming around, how are we going to sort them and how is this going to impact? And that probably calls for a whole separate session altogether. But that's my second point. <laughs> that's what frightens me, really, Raj. Right? <laughs> it does. It does. Okay. So that very frightening thought of this world that we are beginning to live in, which is engaging us constantly in this multiplicity of stories 
and the world that we have come to live in today. Climate change is real. Urban life has taken us very far away from nature. Buddha didn't receive enlightenment in a conference room like this. He received it under a tree. Um, and the fact is that the world has come to tell a story that has a double moral. So while we have many stories that, uh, that, that indicate positive change, growth, um, innovation that uplifts human endeavor, changes lives, there are many stories that are stories that talk of and speak of an environmental degradation, uh, the creation of an ecosystem that survives on the balance of double moral. I take, but I'm giving, so it's okay. What I hope to do with many more of you and hopefully many, many more people in the world today is to use the opportunity of the discovery that each of us defines our story and our story is connected to this planet. We are actually the only living, alive planet in the solar system and perhaps many more solar systems around us. What Earth gives us a plenty and for free, we will not find anywhere else. So I think what each of us needs to fit into our story, which is in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions, is the awareness that we've actually been blessed to be born on a planet that is alive. And if each of our choices, whatever those may be, choice of consumption, choice in conservation, protection, you could be anybody. You could be a business leader, you could be a teacher, you could be a scientist, you could be a, a caretaker of old people. Whatever it is you're doing, if we all go forward in the knowledge that the Earth is the only planet we can call our home, it's the only planet that is alive, then I'm sure our stories will combine to create the impact the world today truly needs. That's a beautiful thought. To, to, to actually think of seven billion people collectively actually living one unified story and in its own And every other form. species. Absolutely. I, 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 we don't I, I, own yeah. the planet. Of course, Absolutely. human beings behave like we own the planet. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, to my third insight uh, was drawn more from the aspect of, and I try to uh, bring here more reference given the multiplicity of speakers that are here, to the category and sector that I've been associated with, which is really digital media, uh, entertainment. Uh, I see... Today, when I look at it, you know, you have a world with a 70 trillion GDP. You have a one and a half uh, trillion ecosystem which is facilitating and is narrating stories in different form, which is really the media and entertainment ecosystem, which is leading to consumption. Now... Some of this consumption is obviously not uh, right uh, and is becoming more and more conspicuous consumption to Dia's point of uh, working towards a greener environment and greener planet. But I see the digital ecosystem aiding in the right manner whereby these narratives and, you know, this immersive storytelling has the ability to lead to transactions and transactions in the right way, which hopefully in their own way will also lead to a certain kind of heightened consciousness to consume what is right, to give back. And I'll draw an example of a very successful company which has emerged literally in the last six or seven years. I happened to meet the founder of this company two years ago. He goes by the name of Travis Kalanick and uh, he is the founder of a company called Uber. Uber is uh, arguably now the most valuable startup in the world. And I asked him this question two years ago and I said, you know, why should your company at that point in time 
It was valued at 16 billion. They'd raised about a billion dollars through Fidelity. But why should it be valued more than Avis and Hertz put together? These are two large uh, car rental companies. I said, they have assets, you know, you have, there isn't any, why should, you know, you be? And his response in the next 30, 40 seconds was really fascinating. Because what he said to me was, he said, see, we're in the business of creating productivity out of otherwise unproductive assets. Now, he's using technology here and making us question that when you go back, you're buying yourself a personal vehicle because you think, A, you could afford it, B, you think public transport is not good enough, C, you know, you just, uh, that's, the, that's what is happening around you in terms of society, etc., whatever. And when you look at it, what that is doing to, uh, and I'm trying to correlate this to your green story of sorts in, in some ways, uh, when you look at what automobile production has done to you know, uh, oil consumption, fuel consumption, entire environments of uh, urban planning or whatever. And he says that I believe the next five years there could possibly be an environment where mankind may say, I don't need to own a car. Yeah. At the touch of a button, when I will get my personal chauffeur available you know, in, in two minutes, why do I need to do that? And that's the story of an Airbnb and why do I need to own homes and whatever. So I think, I think this broader consciousness of leading to transaction and that transaction needn't only be a transaction to own. It could be a transaction to rent. It can be a transaction to just see. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll share another 30-second quick insight to what I talked about four, five years back to, to, the, to the chairman of Warner Brothers. And he was saying, he said, you know, he said, how do you see this business? I said, tell me if I want to buy a home and uh, I'm looking, uh, you know, how could I be a prospect uh, for you? So he said, that's easy if you're buying a home and let's say you're wanting to, I said, I want to do up one of my rooms in a very Victorian style setting. He said, you'll be a prospect for me because my home video business will cater to your needs. So I said, no, it's not that. He said, you as one of the largest studios are probably sitting on 30, 40,000 hours of content. And let's say at that time there was a film called Ocean's Eleven. I think it was 11 or 12, which had just come around. I said, there's a scene in that which is between Pitt, Clooney, and, uh, and Damon. And the background is just 30 or 40 seconds, which has a very Victorian setting. And I may be searching... Now, instead of going to the Home Depot or something, just that scene may come across and I may want to click it and I may want to pay you just five cents. I haven't watched the full film, but I've only watched that and that's my consumption of sorts or whatever is happening. So, I think the manner in which we will look at and the impact at which digital media is going to have in every walk of our life, it is only the tip of the iceberg. But I'm supremely optimistic that all of this eventually will lead to a much, much better place and a far, far nicer uh, home for all of us to be telling the stories that, you know, we spoke about. Yay. The last segment, Fresh Insights. Power is connectivity. Your story shaping the human narrative. I, I have to give my... <laughs> I think uh, every... With this connectivity will come a sense of responsibility. Because we are going to be leading and leaving behind a digital footprint like never before. And hopefully that leads to greater accountability as well. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.